Hi, this is Greg Benz with an overview of the new HDR functionality that Adobe's built right into Lightroom CC 2015. Now, if you're not already familiar with HDR, it stands for High Dynamic Range, and it's essentially a, a way of overcoming those images we've all seen. For example, this shot here of the Stone Arch Bridge in, in Minneapolis where um, you know, the foreground looks great, but the sunset is just totally blown out. The sky has gone completely white, and there's really no way of bringing the, uh, the detail back here. If I go over to the uh, develop module here and just start changing the exposure, we can see even when I take it all the way down that the detail is just completely gone. The sky is white, so there's no way of bringing that back with a single exposure. Now, I could start playing with some of the other darker exposures, and one of them probably has some ability to recover sky, but as I get darker and darker here, these buildings are really getting pushed to the shadows, and that means they're gonna get very noisy um, if I can even pull out the detail I want. So um, the best way to approach this image is really to use multiple exposures, and so I'm gonna use HDR. Um, now the first thing I wanna do is figure out which images to use, and we can see looking through these that I have some people in some of the foregrounds here. Now I don't need all nine shots from this bracketed series here. I, I shot, um, all these are two thirds of a stop apart, so I've got a broad range, um, but I really only wanna select the ones where I don't have some tourists in the foreground, um, as well as make sure I've got my darkest and my lightest exposures to cover the full range. So I'm just gonna limit to four of the nine exposures here, and that's gonna be plenty to create my HDR. So to create the HDR, all we have to do is select the images, right click, and we're just gonna choose Photo Merge, which is a new menu option here, to HDR. You'll, you'll notice Lightroom also now has uh, Panoramas, uh, another nice functionality, but we'll just choose the HDR function, and it's gonna take a second to load this up. Um, now you may be wondering, you know, why do HDR in, in Lightroom? You can do it in Photoshop as well, that's true. Um, but I find that the workflow is much simpler here to stay completely within the Lightroom interface. And additionally, it has some really nice benefits, some things that Photoshop can't do. Um, first, um, the whole process of creating the HDR is um, much, much faster in Lightroom. I find that the, uh, the actual process here runs about two to three times longer in Photoshop than in Lightroom. All right, so now we've got um, the image is pulled up and we can see that I've got the uh, D-Ghost overlay shown. So these odd looking red spots are basically Lightroom showing me where it's gonna try and reduce uh, ghosting in the image. And ghosting means movement from frame to frame. And so these people are moving and the clouds are moving. If I had more water, the water would be moving. And so Lightroom has to deal with that because the images aren't all the same. So it's just showing you where there's movement. Um, I think this is helpful to know where this is for reference if you have to fix things later. Um, but generally speaking, it's hard to really see exactly what's going on here. So sometimes I'll create the HDR and if I don't get the result I like, may run this again. Uh, in this case, I've actually, since I've already knocked out the tourists in the foreground, I'm gonna turn it to uh, no deghosting, uh, which I think is gonna give us a really nice result and, and the preview looks really good. So. Uh, the only thing we'll have to deal with is there's a headlight of this bike here is, is knocked out. But other than that, things look really good. Um, so that was the, uh, the de-ghosting de option. The only other options we have here are the auto-align. And if you're shooting on a tripod, you really don't need to use this. But if you're shooting handheld, this is going to make sure that all your different exposures line up so you don't have funny edges or any sort of movement um, you know, from frame to frame. The other one is this auto-tone option. Now, if I turn this on, you're gonna see that um, Lightroom's trying to bring back a lot more detail to the image, and obviously, um, it's, it's not a bad start for an automatic result. Um, there's really no reason we need to use Autotone here. Um, you can use it in the develop module, and it does the exact same thing. So I'm just gonna turn it off. So really, the only thing I do in this interface is choose the level of deghosting that I want, if any, and then auto line if I need to, and then just hit merge. So it's, it's really that simple. Just make those couple of quick choices. And now in the back room, Lightroom uh, is building that HDR. Now I mentioned earlier a couple of advantages with this. I mentioned that the speed is much faster. Um, the other big advantage of working in Lightroom um, besides the workflow is the file size is much, much smaller. Um, in fact, um, in my own testing, I find that the, the file size is about 12 times larger in Photoshop as compared to what we're getting in Lightroom here. 
which is a completely new file format. You'll see it's a, it's a DNG, so it is a, a RAW, but it's a 32-bit RAW, um, and it's much, much smaller than a 32-bit TIFF uh, in Photoshop. This is only 124 megabytes, uh, whereas you know, the files that I would see out of Photoshop are really more like 1.4 gig. So that's a, a tremendous savings and, and lets you save your you know files for later editing um, without you know, using up a ton of space on your, your hard drive. So big advantage there. So once you've merged HDR, you can now edit this like any other image in Lightroom. And the, the key here is you don't want to or don't need to make any adjustments to the raw before you merge. Just take the merge result uh, jump right over to the develop module and you can start working on the image as if it was an original raw It just has a lot more detail and just to kind of highlight that If we take the exposure and drop this down, we'll see that now that sky has a ton of detail It looks awesome. I in fact, I can take this all the way to you know minus 10 stops of exposure um, And all the details there and you know if I go in the opposite direction and lighten it up all the details in the shadows as well so um, it's a, a really good starting point. You know, we've got essentially all the detail now captured in this single file. So I'm just gonna make a couple of quick edits to it. I wanna bring the highlights down to bring color back into the sky here. And I'm gonna bring up the shadows to get that foreground and you can really push this. In fact, I'm gonna, I'm gonna pause for a second. I mentioned earlier that uh, you can do the, uh, the auto toning uh, right here and the process for doing that is uh, if you just click on the auto button here, you see this is the exact same result that Photoshop was, uh, was trying to give us earlier uh, in the merge dialog. Um, these settings would be identical. In fact, if you left auto tone on when you merge, you would see these settings here. So um, they're, they're literally exactly the same. So I'm gonna just undo that because I wanna manually create this. Um, I'm gonna bring up the clarity a fair bit. I think that really helps punch up the, the buildings here. Um, I wanna bring up my vibrance quite a bit as well. Make sure I kind of capture the uh, color in the original scene. Uh, wanna turn up the contrast to get a little more detail in the buildings, uh, but I need to offset that even more on the shadow side. Um, and when I, when I kick up clarity and contrast, I often boost the shadows quite a bit. I find that that really helps bring out um, a lot more detail without pushing the shadows too dark. And I'm gonna make just a slight tweak to the, uh, the lights and the darks here, just to add a little bit to that S-curve shape. And that looks really nice. I've got great detailed foreground. Um, I could, if I want to, perhaps push up the shadows even a little bit more um, to try and fill out some of the shadow detail in the, in the buildings here. Um, and now I still wanna kinda of deal with the sky. So it looks great here near the horizon, um, but I still want to bring in more detail. And so I'm just gonna use a, a graduated filter and bring that down here. And you can see it's already uh, set to negative highlights. I'm gonna push that even a little bit further. Um, it's looking pretty good. And with the blue tones here, I'd like to take the orange tones I have here and kind of spread them more across the sky. So I'll click on the color. And this is just a trick that I like to use quite a bit. If you just kind of click and hold out into the image here, you can now sample from the image. So I'm just gonna grab one of these tones here and that's now been set. And I can just simply turn up or down the saturation. So if I turn it off and back to where I was, if I bring it all the way up, I get a really punchy pink sky. So I may move it a little bit too high just to kind of get the gradient where I want it. And then I'm gonna bring it just kind of back down to reality. So I, I tend to kind of overshoot a little bit and then dial it back to taste. So that looks good. And then I think I may add a little bit of a vignette to it. And so kind of draw this around the center to just kind of draw eyes to the center here. Maybe bring that out a little bit more. And I'm gonna, gonna do that even more so here. And I wanna throttle it back just a little bit. And that to me looks like a, a really nice finished result there. And we can see we've gone from, you know, effectively the uh, starting point here, our original DNG, which looks like just another uh, image, but had a lot more detail inside of it. And within Lightroom created this, uh, this final version here. Now, um, 
I may want to coin a quick check for dust spots because um, I'm going to go do one last step in Photoshop and I can see up here I do have one dust spot that I want to get rid of so I'm going to quick just take care of that and let's see here alright so that looks pretty good and so at this point I've done everything I want to do within Lightroom but I have that one adjustment so back to this uh, you know, biker I mentioned here, the uh, the light is kind of knocked out. We can see in the foreground here. Can't really fix that in Lightroom. I could play with the different deghosting options. However, you know, we saw those red spots were all over the image. And if I let Lightroom start to deghost the sky and other things, it might just cause more problems than, than help. And this is pretty easy to fix. So I'm just going to take this and I'm going to send it over to Photoshop. And... I don't yet have the uh, updated version of Photoshop, it's just asking me what I want to do. So you wouldn't see this if you've updated Photoshop with Lightroom, but I'm um, just going to open it up in Photoshop. And then I just need to go to the biking image here. So this is the original image that had that correct bike. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to our HDR and I'm going to copy the settings from this. And I'm just going to paste them to this image so that they've got the same adjustments on them and that's just going to make sure that this light looks essentially the same in the two different images and now I'm going to bring this over to Photoshop as well and in a second here we'll pop up and we'll just kind of bring this light from the original over to the HDR and we should be all set alright so here's our HDR and in a second we're going to have the edit um, and with these you know this is this is something I find myself doing frequently with whatever um, you know HDR process I'm using if I was using Photomatics or Photoshop or whatever I'd still be doing this so I'm gonna duplicate the layer and just send it over to the HDR and so now we can see that I've got a new layer on top and so what I want to do is add a mask to it and I'm gonna start by alt clicking for no mask so it's a black mask so it's completely hidden and just want to zoom in here and now all I need to do is turn on my brush, make sure I've got the mask selected with white paint. And now I'm just gonna simply paint in that top layer. So we fix that bike light and make sure I get all the edges here. All right, and so with just a quick little adjustment, we've fixed the, uh, the bike there. So, there's our final image, I think it looks great. So I'm gonna save that. And I can just simply uh, close the other image without saving it, because I didn't want those adjustments. So just to recap, we took uh, our four original images, merged them uh, to HDR inside of Photoshop, then did effectively all our tone mapping, treating it as we would any other raw file uh, right inside of Lightroom, quick and easy. And then just a quick trip over to Photoshop to fix that to headlight and get this uh, final finished image, which I think looks great. And if you think about the workflow there, uh, you know, two to three times faster to do the actual merge compared to Photoshop, so a big time saver. Uh, the, uh, the tools are very intuitive. You're just working with the standard Lightroom interface. And ultimately, the uh, file here, we're able to save a non-destructive workflow with a file that's about 12 times smaller than what you get out of Photoshop. So um, results that are every bit as good as what we could always do in Photoshop, but just a, a really nice step forward in terms of the workflow, much faster and easier uh, workflow. So hope you enjoyed that. If you did, uh, please be sure to subscribe to my YouTube channel for more tutorials. Thanks.